What's up, broods and broodettes? It's the Pico Dudes. I'm Jeremy Hidalgo, and with me is Sam Rather, the host who's sitting on the same side of the table as me today because we've got a new setup, and we're looking forward to getting going with some video. Just not quite yet. So that's the whole thing. You've got... I just thought you were trying to get closer to me. I am. Trying to remove barriers. There's no barriers between us. And you have pants on, so... That's as long not, as we keep it that way, we're good. That's the new rule. If we're sitting on the same side of the table, Sam wears pants. <laughs> oh, both of us wear pants. Wow. Because <laughs> that wasn't happening before. Um, I guess going to video, that's a requirement, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we could just shoot from the waist up and we don't have to worry about it. So mm -hmm. let me pick this that's up. what she said. <laughs> Sorry, you laid it out there for me. Tell you what, you want to talk about some beer? I do want to talk about some I beer. I brewed some beers. What what beer did you brew? Well, I got I brewed a whole bunch of beers, but uh, today I brought you some Lucky Envelope um, Eniac Mosaic IPA. It's a that's a lot of acts. That is a lot of acts. Let me ask you something. Well, let me ask you something. Yeah. Uh, what made you decide to brew this one? So this is this is me getting into my little hoppy world is, you know, I tried back in NB 30 days for our longtime listeners, both <laughs> of them. Uh, and I was like, mm, I kind of like this. And in that was a mix of Citra and Mosaic, which have become a couple of my go to's. Right. This is a it's got a bunch of different hops in it, but Mosaic is the primary hop in it. Mm -hmm. And so I said, hey, I want to try a lucky envelope. Um, I mean, you know the Lucky Envelope guys, or yeah. you at least know about them, right? Ray and Barry. They Ray. started their brewery in uh, early 2015, and it's open in Ballard. You can go mm -hmm. see them. They got some good stable beers. Um, They're right down in a great area, because you can hit Lucky Envelope. Then you can go Kitty Corner. There's Populux. Hit Populux. Go down the street. Stoop. Stoop. You got a whole bunch of breweries down in that Ballard area. Yeah. They're kind of becoming a, a, a new hop, you know, Fremont... Georgetown, Ballard. We're getting some great little beer areas over here. I think we got to redo our center block IPA and go see the guys at Populux. Yeah, we got to have, give us this because we destroyed it. Like, <laughs> correct. That wasn't, <laughs> that did not just happen, did it? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that happened last episode. It, it did. All right. Well, I don't know because I thought everything was on mute. But going on, um, so anything else about Ray and Barry? Um, other than we've reached out to them and are considering seeing if they'll help us host a, some um, sort of Pico Brewers get together. Yeah. We've been, we've been teasing this for about as long as the Pico Brew has been out. It's, it's been, it's been a busy couple Josh, of months we're for so us. we're so sorry. Yeah. Jo <laughs> Joshua Bennett with Pico Brew. He's uh, one of the folks that works over there and, and he reached out and it's something his he idea. wants. His idea. Yeah. His idea is something he wants to it's, put together. Great. We agree that it's a great idea. I think we wanted to try and turn it into some sort of like bottle slash serving keg share. Um, but I think there's some regulations uh, with the liquor yeah. board around how you do that at an open open yeah. place of business. Yeah. So maybe we'll do it at somebody's house or maybe we'll still set up a, just a Pico Brewers meet. Maybe we get it on like a, a rotation. Yeah, they got car meets, but they're not racing them, right? Yeah, exactly. So we can, could we bring all our beers and show them to each other? <laughs> look at this beer you cannot taste <laughs> look at what i made look. yes this is a dark brown bottle and you can't see through it oh man my populex brewery like the the one that i did the <laughs> cinder block showing, IPA. Showing people serving cakes so this is the cinder block yeah except for if i poured a, a glass of that <laughs> people are like that's not really a black ipa it doesn't look like the picture <laughs> no that was a brown eye PA. PA. <laughs> yeah for sure so anyways, Lucky Envelope, um, we did an introduction to you know, them when we did the Hellas Lager. Yeah. Which turned out great. Um, and uh, and this is like their staple IPA. So anytime you go there, they've probably, they've got this on tap. This is their staple IPA. They've got a couple other really good ones like the Lager we tried, which is normally there. They've got a two pepper pale ale, I believe, that, that's got uh, habanero and shishito. And like, we need them. To, someone needs to bring a peppered ale. Yeah, Bad Jimmy's has the habanero Bad one. Bad Jimmy's, we tried that one at the. Uh, I had that at Brewers, Brewers Fest, and it was so good. Uh -huh. it, it was literally, I drank that, and I thought this may be my favorite beer ever. And it wouldn't be hard. It would be kind of like a Denny Con, where yeah, you brew it up, but then you have to go add your own ingredients. Yeah. At the end, but I'm for it. In fact, we should probably just sack up and try it. Yeah. Because no one's coming up with it, so maybe we just created a challenge for ourselves. If somebody else has done this. 
please hit us up on Facebook. Um, let us know. We want to hear about it. Agreed. So anyways, uh, how'd you brew this beer? This is the, the ENIAC Mosaic. Very carefully. That's good. It's the ENIAC Mosaic. So I, you know, I've got it down. I think everyone's getting pretty familiar with it. Uh, I've got it down to about a two-week fermentation period. I do them in my buckets. Uh, in the last four days is when I add my hops. So instead of putting in four days after start, I'm putting in four days before finish. Mm -hmm. um, came with a nice pile of uh, dry hops that I threw in there. And then I just racked it into five bottles, split the sugar five ways, uh, and bottled it up for a couple weeks. So it's about a four-week process. And what we end up with is a nice little... Uh, well, we end up with a very mosaic freaking IPA. Well, that's good. I mean, what what are the uh, what are the stats on this beer? The stats. Well, bench is two twenty five thirty times. Um, What's its forty times? It's a, yeah, it was, it's weight adjusted speed. Hey, we're getting into uh, into oh, training is, camps yeah. season, so it so football is time. just around the corner. So excited, and, and we're gonna have to pick all the best beers for football, which means we're gonna have to try a lot. Yeah, agreed. Um, but this thing's uh, ABV of 6.9, so it's a nice, uh, strong IPA. It's it's verging on double IPA territory. IBUs of 62, which, again, IBUs can be deceptive. It can, as in our IBU 65 beer, yes. it can overpower you. Uh, but then we had ones like that maple syrup one that were IBUs of the 60 that tasted like a 20 or something. Yeah. Agreed. So, um, and then SRM of six. So I probably should let you guess, but just looking at it in the glasses, I think that's about where you would see it. It's a nice light beer. I'd say you, su gold. you su successfully, I don't know why I had trouble with that word, but you successfully matched the color sex. and you, um, also got a good clarity on this mm, one. Mm. So you got the color and clarity right on with what we see in the picture. And, I, oh, you're I, right. If we had that glass, I think we'd be looking at that beer. Yeah. And I'm going to pour myself another glass of it because too good. And you bottle condition this, right? Always. No messing around with a serving cake. I didn't have to blow my top today. Yeah. Lucky you. Lucky envelope. Lucky Sam. Lucky Sam. So, Lucky Sam, yes. tell me, uh, what do you taste on this beer? Well, let me start with... Let me start with what I smell because the first thing I could think of when I smelled this... And I took a big deep whiff of it. Was like lemon or grapefruit pine saw. Mm -hmm. Like I had just really waxed down the table and that clean. It's not a musty. It's to me, it's a clean but very piney type. A little bit of citrus, but not as much tropical fruit as I was kind of hoping. Now it doesn't have any citrus. It's primarily mosaic. I think Magnum on the bittering and then Cascade and Centennial are in there for uh, aroma also. Um, but it's, this is a mosaic beer. And that's what I get is I get, I get not overwhelming pine, but that pine salt type, type of nose. What do you get on it? Yeah, I get pine salt if pine salt made more of a tropical aroma. You're right. Like, it, aroma. Is, it's, it's, it is mango guava yeah, pine I, salt. Yeah, I, that's exactly. I was just kind of getting that, that mango flavor or aroma. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm getting it. Yep. So it's just it's just there. It's not quite as as initially harsh as like a lemon. Um, Correct. But but yeah, sort of like a mango pine salt. Yeah. Um, it reminds me just just tasting it. It reminds me a lot of the Shoots Brewery's Pine Drops. Um, hmm. That's a, a beer that they've got, and it's got sort of the same. There's a little bit of citrus flavor that I'm getting, but it's it's really that pine drop pine kind of flavor um i don't know what pine salt tastes like but, <laughs> and especially it's, not mango pine salt delicious oh mango pine salt the best now let me try this here let you know what are but you getting it's it's also sour mm -hmm. it's got a sour tang to it that's almost like you're biting into a lemon i get the lemon grapefruit sour yeah with pine on the back of my tongue see now i'm getting a little bit of a wheat flavor on the back of my okay. tongue which i think is nice the, the the pine is there it's present but it's not as it's not as overwhelming as it is yeah in the, and in when the, we say pine it's never an overpowering ooh yeah. pine. it's it's like you might have picked up a pine cone got a little bit of sap on your hands and you can smell it then, you know yep, yeah exactly so nobody saw the gesture you were making but let me tell you it was Something There's a to reason behold. we're not recording with video. And um, it's not just lack of pants. It's not just lack of pants. 
so I know that there's a there's a piney uh, bitterness um, that I'm picking up, but not an overwhelming one. It's supposed to have juicy tropical fruit and resinous pine. Not sure if uh, if you're getting all of that. I'm not even sure what resinous pine is versus regular pine. Like like pine resin. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the difference. Which is different how? More like more like dried sap, I guess. Okay. But doesn't um... a little of that. But again, there's still some sweet. So this, yeah. I will be honest, I'm discovering mosaic. I like uh mixed into a beer, but not as the primary hop of yeah. a beer. This is good. It um... is. But then again, I'm not in love with Simcoe and Nugget, which are the parents of mosaic. Mm. Um, you know, I really fall into the citrus, my prime, the amarillo. Um, I do like mosaic, but I think as a second or third, not a primary. Yeah. Mixes in well with like a galaxy. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah, galaxy, which was in the uh, the 802 brew that mm -hmm. we really liked a couple episodes back. That, yeah, that So good. that to me, the MB30, the 802 brews, those are my kind of IPA. Right. And those are those American, you know, American hop, which this pretty much is also. I mean, mosaics from Yakima Valley, so <laughs> this pretty much is. A, uh, but I think they have more of some of those other hops that mellow it a bit and give it a bit more sweetness. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much sweetness you're getting out of this. I'm getting a little bit, but I think one of the things is I have no idea what that is. Is that me? No, that is me. I, I was believe. gonna say. So the reason that we're dinging was not me. After all, do you no. need to uh, um, press the shh button? No, it's all right. Anyway, no, I'll, I'll just... no, you're not just let it keep dinging. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. There we go. There's the shh button. What? Oh, it was that? Yes. Really? The laptop. What? What was it doing that about? Uh, Alicia you... was texting me. Oh, now you have to go back. Yeah. Cut all that. I, I will cut that. Okay. I think. There's our market. Marker. Oh, there's our market. All right. Our market. God, I got to I gotta cut more of this out. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so we've talked a little bit about the, the flavors that we're getting, the aroma we're getting. Um, what about moving on to rating it? What do you think? Sure. I'm for it. <laughs> yeah? It's All mine, right. so you rate first. Although we screwed that up last time. Sorry. No worries. Well, I'm, uh, you know, it's kind of growing on me. Um, I think. You know what else? No, I used that in a previous episode. Well, it's not. It's not. I, don't I was going to say, you know what else is growing on you? It's good, but it's um, it's a three star beer. You, you're giving it three stars. I'm, I'm just going to cut in front of you and call it three. I'm right there. Okay. I'm right at the three star beer. Yeah. I am not going to probably run out for it again. I've had other IPAs that I liked better. It's a it's good. I would not be embarrassed to share it with my friends. Yeah. I'm going to drink every last drop of all the bottles I've got. Yep. Um, and I'll do so happily. But uh, to be clear, I bought one six pack of Pine Drops, drank the whole six pack, and haven't bought it. Then never bought it. Exactly. It's, it's a very it's, specific. Yeah. Kind of hit to it, flavor to it. Yeah. I mean, in its own right, it's a good beer. I think it just doesn't fit a flavor flavor profile that we enjoy. Correct. So. So, um, aces for that. Um, do we need to vamp and tell people anything else exciting that's happening? Well, I don't know. I, what else do we have coming up that's exciting? You've got a number of Pico packs that Man. you've brewed that are that are waiting in the wings. I do. I've got Kinsman, uh, 21.3, whatever it's called. But that's an, another IPA that's primarily Mosaic Hop. I've already tried it, and I can tell you it's not too far off from this. So, okay. Uh, just spoiler alert, <laughs> listen for the fun, or at least download for the downloads, but uh, it probably isn't going to be too far off where we're at with this. But then things get interesting because we, and this will probably be our actual next episode, mm -hmm. we are going to have Stingray Showdown. Stingray Showdown. Except there's no showdown about it. It's just Stingray comparison in a friendly and, and non-abrasive manner. Yeah, and there's going to be a little bit of difference in the Stingray. Intentionally. Yes, intentionally. So, so both intentionally and maybe unintentionally. Man, I'm hoping that it doesn't end up, you know, like any major mishaps with the Stingray this time. I um, really hope not. I've, I've snuck a taste, and uh, I think it's not bad. So what happened here is you brewed the Stingray in the normal style using Safali or USO5. Do you remember what it 
I don't remember off the top of my head. I feel like it's a Folly 05 or yep. it's a Folly 04 Same or whatever. Thing. And and I, to try something different, because I also had a Stingray, said, why don't I try this uh, Denny's favorite, which is that 1450, 1450 Y yeast. Y yeast, yeah. And so I did that. You did it uh, the traditional way with what Pico, Pack, uh, Pico Bruce sends us. And we're going to compare them and we're going to say... This is really hard because we didn't brew them in any controlled manner. This is the most non-scientific experiment. You right, can do. right. I did it in wild temperature swings while juggling it uh, in the air, and you probably did it in a nice controlled. I didn't actually. I mean, <clears throat> it was fairly controlled. It went in the brew bag, but I brewed it up, um, pitched the yeast, and went on vacation. Mm. I was gone for twelve days. I let it ferment for about fourteen. Um, was your nest set to hold a steady temperature in the house? Nope, because it's it's summer here. Empty nest. And the, yep, we had an empty nest. And oh, the you heat, don't have the AC. We don't have any AC. That's Are why you it's brewing warm. anything right now? I haven't because it's hot and I don't really want to add more heat. Um, but I am going to put on the Two Fellas uh, IPA. Really? Yeah, it's uh, something IPA. It's the Two Fellas something IPA. I've heard that one's really good. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna, so we're going to have Stingrays. We're going to see how those compare. Then I've got, uh, I took my yeast from my Stingray mm -hmm. and used it to brew up a whole nother brew. So I reclaimed my yeast. I think we talked a little about that. I did it again the other night um, to make up some Rogue Dead Guy Ale. So I'm using reclaimed Y yeast 1450 and a Rogue Dead Guy Ale. I know we've reviewed that one of our very first yep. that we had with Brendan. Yep. We're going to try it again with the Y yeast. So we're going to try and see if we're noticing any flavor difference or if this is a whole bunch of hooey and all these yeasts produce about the same beer. I think arguably we could just be unsophisticated enough in our tasting ability to um, our, not notice a difference. Our beer map is pretty limited. Yeah. Uh, beer? Yes or no? Mm, yep, it's beer. It's Man, this thing still hits me in the nose with a sharp, um, not bad, but that sharp tropical and... Yeah. It's it's a little sour, too. Mm -hmm. There's a sourness in the, the front. It is, and I'm not sure why. Um not sure if that's the yeast per chance or what, but I will say this: it's warmed up a little bit in my glass. It's a lot more pleasant, just a little bit, uh, just a slightly warmer. It's a three point oh two now. No, oh, I'm I'm gonna leave it. Um, so we've got that coming up. I have a couple other beers on top of that. You're gonna be brewing something, and we're gonna have plenty more to keep people entertained with. Yeah, and we're gonna try video. Um, I'm working on the podcasting room. The setup's a little different tonight. Um. Side give by us, side, so yeah. they can count our numbers. Give us, uh, give us a couple weeks, and uh, you should be seeing every episode that we drop on a podcast. Should also have a video accompaniment. Visio accompaniment. Video. I can't <laughs> we can have little boxes. <laughs> yes, and... it'll, we'll draw diagrams, and um, and so we we've gotten a little bit of a positive response. Uh, we had a grand total of one comment where they said yes. You should do video because I want to see how my beer compares to your beer. That's literally um, a little bit of positive response. That's as little bit as you can get. So the difference between a little bit and none is that one person. Hey, if we are if we started this and our goal was if we can just help that one person. Just help that one person. And that one person. We're actually seeing some people. The Pico Brewers Facebook page is a great place to be because there's so many people eager to help and tell you what you're doing wrong. So getting on the peak, but uh, by the way, it's almost entirely friendly. It really is. And uh, we have, I, we continue to see new people Yeah. now that it's being sold at Williams and Sonoma and Best Buy and all these different places and, and Sur La Tabla and all this, you're seeing more and more people getting into it. We had the big specials that came out on prime day, which was a little, so I don't know if you noticed, but the price was raised in the week leading up to prime day on yeah. Amazon and then dropped to show a big savings i'm like you use one of our discount codes at the end of this podcast you're gonna pay about the same for your pico brew yeah exactly which you can buy anytime yeah get that anytime but we're seeing more new buyers who are now getting into the machine mm -hmm. who are trying stuff out and are saying i have no idea what i'm doing is there any way can help us I'm like oh there's so much stuff available now to help you it's not like the early days of Pico Brew and it was covered wagons and horses. Yeah. And bear with us a little bit. We've got some big ideas on some things that we're going to do. 
Um, we just have to think through and a little. jobs and families. Yeah. We just have to think through a little bit how we're going to accomplish these and kind of get ourselves set up. But um, we've talked again about not just videoing the podcast episodes and putting those up on YouTube, but some actual episodes that would include, you know, how to's us kind of showing you some of the brew setup and, and things that we do when we go through the, the process um, as well as stuff that's maybe just a little off the wall. Cause I don't know us off the wall. We want to have fun with this thing and we hope you do too. We have to do the show after the show. We'll charge a premium. We've got a couple episodes. Yeah, there that... may not be pants involved in those though. So be aware. There was plenty of pants. There just happened to be so many pants. Taco trucks and oh, oh, those were lost, the good old days. Lost episodes. Lost if, episodes. Are... I, I tell you what, if we get ten people, ten people to rate on iTunes. Oh, regardless our, of the rating. Regardless of the rating, just rate us on iTunes. Five stars are better. Just rate us on iTunes. Uh, we will release one of the lost episodes. Oh God! And you will have to. You, you I will, will get never it. get to run for office if we do this. You will get it, but you will just have to pay one dollar for it. I will never get to run one dollar for, for the episode. Giving up on any political aspirations whatsoever. Well, so, so here's the thing, though. Like, I think I set that up in but, a way that we're probably not going to get ten ratings, and nobody's going to want to play one dollar. We might at least make a dollar. <laughs> yeah, we're going to make one dollar. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, as we as we start, mostly because we need it in a secure portal because it is not child friendly. It is not child. friendly. It is please. Not all of our episodes are, are child friendly. We no, do have this the is clearly ones. not appropriate for those under twenty five or thirty. I mean, it's not <laughs> twenty five or thirty. Uh, I'm maybe you you think kids are more sheltered than they actually <laughs> are. <laughs> I don't know. I think that'd be fun. Uh, let's see what happens. And if that does happen, maybe we do a couple more Lost episodes. Lost episodes are those that after you've recorded two or three episodes in a single night going through all those beers, that's the stuff that starts to come out. Yes. And um, we ooh. guarantee you'll laugh. Oh. I mean, there's there's no question you'll laugh. We'll probably laugh. We'll probably be embarrassed as heck because we regret so many things yeah. at Lost episodes. I have actually listened to one afterwards and gone... I don't remember ever saying that. Um, <laughs> I think that might have been one that I actually aired. <laughs> oh, yeah, it might, it might be. Uh -oh. uh, so I think that'll be fun. We got lots of other cool stuff coming up. So you got to get on. Rate us on iTunes, please. Start watching the YouTubes because that's where we're going to release the videos, right? You can yep. even subscribe early if you want so you're notified as they come out. Right? You, you can actually subscribe currently and yep. you can listen to the podcasts on YouTube already. Oh, cool. Um, they they are they just show up as a I don't know a weird squiggly line on the on the video part, cool. so you know you're just listening to an audio file. But but they're there. Uh, and we we have, have one video recorded. We do, and I will try and get that one up for tomorrow's episode. Mm. Um, mm. Assuming I can get by the, tomorrow's episode, you mean the episode that will happen before they hear this. It will be. Oh, correct. Good, good point. <laughs> yes. So, so that would be July twenty, whatever. So tomorrow. by the time you hear this, there may be an episode up on YouTube to go watch already. Yes. Uh, go put your eyes on that. Put your eyeballs on it and your earphones, and let us know what you think and what you like more and what you want less of. Unless yep. it's me. And and by the way, the setup that we're discussing about how we've reconfigured everything is not effective in that. No, in that no, video. we're not wearing pants in that one. We are not wearing pants. So um, we kept everything at waist and up, and they'll see that in the video. Mm -hmm. So um, we're not wearing any pants. Film at 11. I do not know I'm stuck on pants today. It is so hot. Why are you stuck on film at 11? You've never seen that? No. Amazon Women from the Moon? Oh, that was, that's what that's from? That yeah. or it was Kentucky Fried Chicken. Two amazing movies, totally worth watching. That are what thirty five years old now, and two of the funniest movies I've ever seen. I think I watched Amazon Women on the Moon when like Mystery Science three thousand did a thing on it. So it was like nope. Yes, it was Amazon nope. Women on the Moon and nope. the little bobble, bobblehead or like the dudes, Steve and whatever the other robot's oh, name you is. Or whatever. Just you mean Crow? Crow. Steve. Uh, <laughs> So Amazon Women on the Moon. Keep in mind, I was fucking twelve. Was a sketch comedy movie that jumped from sketch to sketch to sketch and occasionally showed a little bit of a snippet of some Amazon women on a moon. 
in all, there's probably like seven minutes of that footage in the entire movie. Right. All the rest of it is hilarious freaking sketches. I swear to God, there's a Mystery Science Theater 3000. If there is, I want that. You know, we're way off topic. This probably should be a lost episode at this point. So should we let these listeners get back to their daily dives? Absolutely. We'll continue the debate offline. Yes, we will. Pico dudes. Out. You've reached the end of another episode of the Pico Dudes podcast. Connect with us at picodudes.com, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you enjoyed our show, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts but mostly iTunes. Also, if you want a code that will help give you some discounts off of the Pico Brew equipment, Z150D equals $150 off of the Z series. Pro, P-R-O, 125D gives you $125 off of the Pico Pro. And C75D gets you $75 off of your purchase of a Pico C. We hope you enjoy listening. Look forward to hearing from you. Pico Dudes, out.